up and welcome i'm the one and only west coast king and welcome back to major league 90 where we are talking major league soccer it's been a while since i've gotten one of these episodes out mostly because nothing really has happened all that much in the mls in the recent weeks but now in recently in the last couple of days a couple of big stories have broken and we're going to talk about a couple of those today the first one being a big signing for orlando city the first time i've talked about them here in this series they have gone and signed Antonio Nosorino from Italian Giants AC Milan, the second player from AC Milan to make the jump to the MLS in the last few weeks following Nigel De Jong's joining um, into the LA Galaxy side. And I really do like this move for Orlando City. They were actually a pretty surprising team last season. A lot of people expected them to struggle in their first year in the MLS, and they really did not all that much. And not as much as people expected. And this signing, along with a couple of other small moves, I really think they're set up for some pretty nice success, pretty decent success this season. I think they're going to surprise a lot of teams. I really do expect them to be in the playoff hunt this year. They were, they were in it a little bit last year, but this year I think they're going to make that jump into a playoff contender. The reason I say that is you look at that roster and I believe it's one of the better built teams in the MLS. They're a very complete team. Which is surprising, again, for a team that's only in its second season in the league. Um, it's just, they have a great mixture of veterans and young players. And to put Nosorino now into a midfield that's already pretty solid, it's going to just give them that extra boost that they may have been missing last season. It's going to make them a more balanced team, a more consistent team, and really going to elevate them into the next level. And I really do expect them to be a playoff contender come the end of this season. So the other story that broke this week is that Obafemi Martins is leaving the MLS and heading to China. An, a, just another player in a long line of players now heading over to that Chinese league that are throwing millions and millions and millions of dollars around at players and bringing a lot of uh, big name talents in. Now, Obafemi Martins is probably not on that same level as some of the other players that they brought in, such as Ramirez from Chelsea or um, Alex Teixeira. I mean, those are some players in their prime, some elite players. Obafe Martins is probably past that point, but still for the MLS, he was a very big player. So if we take a look at this move on how it will impact the Sounders. Now, obviously the Sounders are my team, so you knew I was going to talk about this story regardless. But, you know, when I first saw his post on Twitter that he was leaving, I, immediately I thought, oh my God, we're screwed. Like, he, he's one of the most consistent scorers in the MLS, one of the best players. And obviously, one of the best players on the Sounders, you take a player like that off of any team... And they're going to struggle. At least you would think they were going to struggle. But the same day that he posted that on Twitter that he was leaving, the Sounders had a game, a preseason game, albeit, but still a game down in California against the LA Galaxy. And they went on to win that game 4 nothing. Now, I know it's a preseason game and it doesn't mean anything. But, I mean, it doesn't mean anything as far as the season goes. But it does mean something for this team. It, it just shows that things are going on behind the scenes that maybe not everyone is aware of with that team they're undergoing a formation change which is really going to help this transition i mean there's a lot of times you lose a player like that and there's shoes that need to be filled someone has to take that spot and try to pick up that slack because the sounders are undergoing a formation change from a 4-4-2 to a 4-3-3 there are no shoes to fill nobody has to feel the need to step up and try to be obafemi martins there's no need for that. There's there's no need for that player role at all. And I don't want to say that Obafemi Martins would mean nothing if he were to stay with the C with the Sounders this season. Obviously, he would be a big player for us. But there's no there's no role to fill, and I think that just kind of puts everyone at ease. It kind of takes the stress off. And the fact that they won four nothing, I can't remember the last time the Sounders scored four goals in LA. I mean, that's unheard of almost. And they had a great performance. And Jordan Morris himself had two assists, which is another reason why maybe losing Obafemi Martins is not that big of a deal. Of course, youngster Jordan Morris now has a role with this team, a clear-cut role. He can relax and just play football. And I think it kind of puts everyone at ease where there was a logjam up front in the striker position. Now there's not. Everyone can just kind of play their game. And I think, in the at least for this season, it's not going to affect Seattle as much as maybe we had originally thought. As far as the MLS is concerned and how losing a player like that affects the league, I know there's been a lot of talk about these two competing leagues, maybe the MLS and the Chinese league, two leagues that are growing, trying to build their brand, and maybe there be some competition between the two as far as signing players, but honestly, I don't see it. I think this is kind of a more of a blip on the radar more than a, a, a starting trend. I really don't think that the Chinese league is really going to be looking to pick apart the MLS for players and talent. 
I just don't see it. I mean, if you take a look at what the Chinese league is doing um, and how they're trying to build their brand, it's completely different from the MLS. The MLS is taking the slower, more gradual approach, building domestically, trying to keep domestic talents at home, and then trying to branch out and, and add a couple of foreign players here and there. Um, some of the bigger names, maybe not in their prime, but name recognition players to add to their brand. The Chinese league is shooting for the stars immediately, bringing in players in their prime, throwing millions of dollars around at players. That's just not what the MLS is about. So when it goes to transfer targets, I really don't think that the two leagues are going to be targeting the same types of players. And as for the Chinese league, looking at the MLS as a talent pool that they're going to pick out of, again, I don't see it happening. The Chinese league, if I'm correct in saying, is built in a way where they only have five international roster spots available per team, and one of those roster spots still has to be Asian. So you're looking at four roster spots that are from international players that are not Asian, I don't think those teams are going to be looking at the MLS players as players they're going to want to fill those limited number of roles. So I think they're still going to look at bigger players probably from Europe to try to bring to China rather than MLS players. Just doesn't make sense for that league and what they're trying to do. And that the way they're doing it is completely fine. I mean, that's a, that's a great way to build your league if you have that kind of money to throw around. I mean, they, they have involvement from, from the government over there in China trying to build that sport. And the, the MLS is not like that. I mean, it's a much more subtle approach. And for that reason, I really don't think these two teams are going to cross paths along their way to building the same brand. They're, they're heading down. They're aiming for the same goal, but the paths they're taking are completely different. So I really don't think this is going to be a problem for either league. So that's all I really had to talk about today. Kind of a shorter episode. As always, let me know what your thoughts are on the topics that I talked about in the comments below. I always like to see your feedback on these stories. What do you think about the No Sorino deal for Orlando City? Again, I really like that one. I think he's going to give them a big boost, and I expect to see them in the playoffs this year. And what do you think about the Obafemi Martins deal, both for the Sounders this season and for the MLS overall? And what do you think that trend kind of means for the MLS and for the Chinese League? Do you think they're going to get in each other's way in their attempts to grow their brands? I really don't see it happening, but I could be completely wrong there. Hopefully, I'm not. But that's going to do it for this one. If you had as much fun as I did, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you when we come back for some more Major League 90. See ya.